I never want to go caving again. Have you heard of the Dark Chamber? I couldn't believe I had even agreed to do it, but if it would make Mel happy, I would do anything. The experience was advertised as a haunted cave tour by Lantern Light, and even though I've never been one to believe in the supernatural, I wouldn't have doubted it here. It looked terrifying just from the pictures online. Extremely cramped spaces that they force you to crawl through at one point, sections with uncomfortably low visibility, and terrifyingly vast caverns that seemed to have impossibly high ceilings. It was everything she loved. It was a bit of a drive away from the city, but the scenery made up for it with its beauty. Twisting roads lined with pine trees led our ascent higher into the Rockies. The cave was tucked away into the side of a towering mountain, a series of large log cabins next to the entrance. The air was pure and refreshing up here, eminent the moment we stepped out of our car. I took a moment to savour it, knowing we would soon be deep within the earth. We stopped at the main building where we exchanged our tickets for a lantern that was to be shared between us. It was bustling with activity, kids running around the gift shop screeching with joy. Just a reminder, at some points during the experience your light will be turned off for a moment, the woman behind the counter said with a smile. Don't panic when it happens, it's just part of the experience, it'll come back on. I picked up the object and took a moment to observe it, noting how there was no obvious way to open any of the panels or to turn the light on or off. We picked up some guide pamphlets on the counter and made our exit out of the cabin, following the trail to the cave's entrance. How do you think they're going to turn it off? Mel asked, staring at it swinging between us as we walked. Look at it. It's not an actual lantern. It's probably just a light bulb they can control with, like, Bluetooth or something, I said. We stood before the mouth for a second before entering. As if listening, the light turned on. I'd never experienced claustrophobia until the moment I stepped into the cave. Cold wind rushed through my ears, overwhelming my senses. Stalactites loomed overhead, casting long shadows that blended into the ever-present darkness that consumed every direction. Small lights lined the rocky walls, offering just barely enough light to make out the entrance and our immediate surroundings beyond what the lantern reached. I tried to imagine the children from the gift shop struggling to keep calm in here. We stood idly by a large sign marking the beginning of the tour. A few stragglers loitered close by, frequently checking the time on their phones. It was meant to have started a few minutes ago, but I guess they could just be running late. I'm gonna go run to the bathroom real quick. Be right back. Mel nudged me playfully, already turning to leave. Hurry up, we might leave without you, I teased. She turned and rolled her eyes at me before stepping out of the mouth of the cave, speed walking to the cabins. I felt even more uncomfortable standing there alone, feeling as though the walls would cave in and collapse on top of me. Feeling overwhelmed, I stared down at the lantern weighing down my right hand, watching how it illuminated the stalagmites circling me. I watched the shadows dance as a large figure shifted behind me. How much longer do you think it'll be? This place has already given me the creeps, said one of the men who had been standing nearby, now closer to me. He looked equally as nervous as I felt. I hadn't noticed him before, which was surprising given the large stature of the man. His fingers toyed with the creased pamphlet in his hands. Hopefully not too long. It hasn't even started yet, and I'm starting to feel the same way too, honestly. It felt good to know someone else shared my fears. Do you know how long the tour is going to last? He thought for a moment, glancing down at his pamphlet. It's supposed to only be about 45 minutes, but apparently their dark chamber attraction tends to make it draw on a bit longer. At least that's what it says. I felt my pocket for my own company, tugging the crumpled paper out. A map of the whole cave system sprawled across three pages, which one highlighting some of the main attractions in the different sections. The dark chamber was marked towards the end, a huge feature taking up most of the page. Traverse through our darkest chamber with only one light to guide you. Stay close to the wall, stay close to your guide. They lurk in the center. They? Who's they? Do you see that last line in the description? I don't know, I think it's part of the bit they tell the kids where they... So sorry about that, folks. A lanky man made his way over to our group. My last tour went a bit over. I'll be sure to make it up to you all. His voice bounced off the walls as he spoke, amplifying the volume. I glanced behind me to see Mel running over just in time. The tour guide smiled. Alright, let's go over some basic safety procedures. Most of the tour was uneventful. We wandered through different sections of the cave system, listening to recountings of its history and local legends. Fortunately, most of the things highlighted on the website had been exaggerated. Like, the passage you have to crawl through. Or actually just areas where you had to slightly duck to get through. Our lights did flicker quite a few times, much to our amusement. The tour guide would allude to something supernatural, and on cue, they would flicker or turn off for a moment. 
despite a lot of the tour being a bit cheesy, the tunnels themselves were eerily beautiful. Deep, cavernous ridges in the rock-like claw marks decorating the walls. Our lanterns illuminated sparkling minerals and revealed giant, sprawling caverns full of history. There were roped-off areas with hanging employees-only signs, though beyond the rope was always pitch black nothing. So many sections were blocked off that it may be a bit uncomfortable, though I suppose I don't have any other caving experiences to compare it to. Any time we stood close to them, I always felt like something might try to grab me from the darkness, just waiting for me to move over just close enough for them to pounce. It was also just so cold throughout the entire cave system, and it seemed to just get colder the further we pressed on. Overall though, we were both really enjoying the whole experience so far, until we reached the passageways leading to the dark chamber. You know, the legends claim something roams through these caves. The guide spoke lowly, his baritone voice reverberating off the walls. Apparently, the first people to ever find these caves went missing. For a long time, we thought the system was discovered in 1947. It wasn't until we began having expositions deeper into the cave that their corpses were discovered, along with papers dated to 1912. He spoke with a voice that reminded me of a camp counselor telling ghost stories. Another group was also discovered from 1923. While they had long since decomposed, there was something strange about their remains. The clothes that they wore were completely tattered, with long jagged gashes of ripped blood stained in their place. The rocks surrounding them were also etched with long, frantic scratch marks. This is a bit dramatic for a children's gimmick, isn't it? I raised my eyebrows at Mel for her input, but she merely shrugged in response. He continued talking as we walked through more of the narrow passageways, leading up to the attraction. It was surreal being down here. With so little light, we were completely reliant on our lanterns. I gripped the handle on mine tightly. There was a path that was so narrow that we had to walk single file to pass through, the guide's voice being completely inaudible until we made it out to the other side. Alright, so for this section I'm going to need you all to pay close attention. How this works is that we'll all be holding onto a rope to connect us all. We're about to navigate through the dark cavern, a place where almost no light penetrates, including our lantern. Luckily, mine seems to always stay on, he said with a wink. It'll only last about a minute. For your safety, please hold on tightly to the rope and stay close to the wall. This is so performative, Mel chuckled. How much do you think the kids freak out? My cheeks flushed as people turned to look at us. I elbow her lightly. We began filing into a neater line as they began passing the rope back. The guide's voice was mostly unintelligible so far ahead of us, but he seemed to still be talking about safety procedures. The man I had spoken to before shuffled in front of me. The rope finally reached him, our hands brushing as he shakily handed the end of it to me. I looked up for a moment and recoiled, shocked by the look of genuine worry on his face, sweat glimmering on his skin despite the frigidity of the cave. I wanted to say something, anything, but the people ahead of us began moving forward. Hurriedly, I passed Mel the end of the rope and gripped tightly to the remaining section in my hands. Remember to stay close, the guide's voice echoed off the walls. I watched his headlights slowly disappear into the darkness. We passed through the entrance into the section, crossing under the sign warning of danger ahead. In an instant, I was plunged into darkness. With the complete absence of light, it was impossible to see anything. Whether my eyes were open or closed, the same view greeted me an oppressive black void that threatened to swallow me whole. Wind shuddered like cool breath against my neck. I wanted to collapse into myself. The rope tugged me forward. I felt my legs unwillingly move with it, forcing myself to keep going. My shoulders scraped and dragged against the jagged wall. I blindly followed the person in front of me, cursing myself for ever agreeing to do this. I felt the rope ahead of me veer slightly to the right, then immediately fall limp. A wave of panic washed over me, fearing it somehow got cut, yet I kept being pulled forward. Without letting go of my own grip, I slide my palms up the course rope, trying to feel for the man. It burns and skins my hands as I bend myself awkwardly to extend my arms as far as possible. Yet I just keep going, never bumping into another person. The guide's headlamp disappears into an abyss of light ahead of us. Relief washes over me as I see the end in sight, my legs desperately pulling forward to get back to the surface. Blinding light temporarily shocks me as I emerge back into the entrance. My eyes struggled to adjust, but between blinking I saw the empty space in front of me. Before I begin to say anything, we were being ushered out of the cave. 
The guide collects the end of the rope from Mel and corrals us like a herding dog to the exit. Alright, looks like that's everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Please be sure to check out the gift shop and explore the other activities we have around here. Thank you all and come back soon. He seemed eager to get us to leave. I suppose it was due to time constraints, thinking of what the man had said to me earlier. I look around for him once more, trying to spot his face among the crowd of us leaving. Yet I still don't see him anywhere. We find ourselves back inside the gift shop. In between looking at tacky knickknacks, I find myself looking towards the door each time the bell chimes, hoping to see the man walk in at any point. I just can't remember seeing him leave. Hey, do you guys think the guy in front of us during the rope bit was part of the tour? I still haven't seen him anywhere. I think he snuck out or something to scare us, I say turning to Mel. What? Who are you talking about? She barely looks up from the shelf she's looking at. You know, the guy in front of me when we were in the chamber. He completely disappeared while we were in there. He must have gone through one of those employee-only areas or something. She finally turns to face me, eyebrows furrowed in confusion. Steph, there was a woman in front of us the whole time.